Well, Chestnut Street Community Church, I want to tell you today that what you expect from God in this year of Engage is less than what he wants to do in your life. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's a good thing. If we got everything we expected, then God would be predictable. Do we want a predictable God? I don't want a predictable God. I want a God who surprises me. I want a God who, who I say I want one thing and then he gives me something better. That's the type of God that we have today. I want to tell you guys a story. This is a fairly recent story. This is the story of my life this week. <laughs> Okay, very recent, this week. I want to start off by saying that my expectation, right, after I gave uh, my last sermon, which was the six weeks of confrontation, and we've been talking about the ways that God has confronted us, and we've been expecting you guys to allow God to confront you, right, church? Yes. And Pastor Art has been telling us to, to confront God in, a, in such a way that we allow him to confront us as well. My expectation was that today, Pentecost some Sunday, God will be doing something special. It's still my expectation. I don't know what special is. I don't want to put a label on it because I don't want to limit him. And a lot of times when something good is about to come, right, we have this guy, right, let's call him a guy, this enemy right, the enemy, devil, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, right, he's always trying to mess things up. And it's kind of like you're standing there, and this is the way I imagine it, okay? You're standing there, and I want you to all to picture yourselves as if you were standing there in your life, and God is just next to you, just hyping you up. He's just like, yeah, Eric, I love Eric. And he's just loving you and he's he's just making all these wonderful plans and he's orchestrating your life with purpose and he's like God is the is our biggest hype man he wants you to succeed he wants you to have a good life to be to be broken but in a sense so that you can be made whole and it's kind of like the devil he's just back here looking at you the same way he's just like I don't like Eric why is why is Eric getting all the blessings that I should have got and so he has his own plans in the background and a lot of times when good things are coming when we're beginning to engage the Holy Spirit we also have to be able to engage the enemy amen so this week Last week, as many of you know, the transition team, we were in Nashville, Tennessee, together. We had a wonderful time. So great. It was beautiful. We got to see a lot of the wonderful things that Foursquare Church is doing across this nation, across the world. It's beautiful to be a part of such a beautiful thing in Foursquare and what we're doing nationally and globally. And we come back on uh, Friday, I think we came back, right Joe? Thank you, this is why you need a wife. And Saturday, things are normal, Sunday we go to church. Uh, uh, while we were at Nashville, I got a call from my aunt telling me that my grandmother, she had a stroke, okay? She had a stroke, she was in the hospital, they said it was pretty bad but that she was, she was okay, she re rehabilitated, she went home, and, and she was okay. I spoke to her on the phone Monday night. I'm talking to her, we're, we're sharing stories, we're having a good time on the phone. My grandmother loves action movies. <laughs> She's, she literally tells me on the phone, I'm like, Grandma, what movies have you been watching? Because she, she, every any movie that's been on TV, at the very least, She's seen it. Like when I was little, she'd be like, oh yeah, this is gonna happen and this is gonna happen. And she's telling me that all the movies now are just remakes of older movies. 
she's seen it. She's like, she could tell me it's rare that a movie comes out that's new, that's actually new. And we're having a good time on the phone. And I'm like, well, Grandma, what's your favorite type of movie? She's like, action. I'm like, why? She says, well, I, you know, I don't want none of that love stuff and love stories. No, that's boring. I want to see somebody get punched in the face. She's like, I want to see the action. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm, I'm, she's exactly saying this, and I'm cracking up on the phone. We have a wonderful talk. And um, I call my dad after that, and I tell him, hey, uh, Grandma's home. You can, you can give her a call. So he calls her. And he's talking to her on the phone for about two hours. So two hours after I get off the phone with her, my aunt calls me again, frantic, basically screaming, telling me that she had another stroke and she's going to the hospital now. So that's Monday night. And that day she had just finished telling me that at the doctor's appointment, the doctor said, if she has another one, it could be fatal. And those two things mixed together make for a really troublesome feeling in your heart. Because they just finished telling me if she has another one, it could be really bad as far as being fatal. And then she calls me saying, hey, she had another one. So I called my father immediately. He, was, uh, he, he wasn't answering the phone because he was doing something. I called my stepmother, and she goes and she gets him. And we immediately say, um, he's calling me. He's like, OK, well, are we going? We have to go because of the news that the doctor gave. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, I was in the middle of making plans with Joanna for us to celebrate our anniversary, which was Tuesday. And I felt extremely conflicted. My dad's just like, are we going? Are we going? Are we going? Are we going? And I'm just like, <laughs> I was feeling so overwhelmed. And I just said, yeah. And we immediately looked for our ticket. I flew out uh, Tuesday. And I remember sitting in the car when Joanna dropped me off. And I broke down in tears because I was overwhelmed with everything. And I was also so upset because this had to happen on my anniversary. And all I could say to her was, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And of course, she looked at me like, what's wrong with you? Why are you saying sorry? But I had so much guilt inside of me. As some of you know, as I've talked about in my, in, in my first sermon here, well, our, in our first year of marriage, I was depressed. And that meant that our first year was really difficult, more difficult than you know. And then that spilled into our second year. And this year, I was like, you know what? We're going to have a great anniversary. And then, no, you're not. At least not in the way I planned it. And so I got out, got on the plane, I head over, I get there Tuesday afternoon, my grandmother's in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm there, I walk into the hospital room, and she's completely just not really cognizant. She's not aware the stroke really messed her up. So as some of you may know, Whichever side of the brain the stroke affects, it affects the opposite side of the body. So she had it on the left side of her brain, so the whole right side of her body is unable to move. And it also affected her speech, so she can't speak right now. Okay? And that first day, she could open her eyes, but it was so bad that she could only it was so, she was so left dominant, or the left side of her body was working, that she would, anytime somebody would speak to her, she would look all the way up this way, all the way as far left as she could. Now, as the days went on, she got better. The next day, she could look you in the eye on her left side. She could turn up to the middle, 
which was fantastic. She could lift up her arm. And as each day went by, she, she generally had small improvements, but in regards to a stroke, they were huge, right? So like she was able to feed herself, which is huge. That was a big, big deal. And things in the hospital were improving slightly, but things outside of the hospital for me were... That night, we went back to the hotel. It was me, my father, and my sister. And my sister's best friend lives in Georgia, so she came by to support her. And I was not able to get any sleep. No sleep for me that night. That was Tuesday night. No sleep. Because my sister had like came in, said, hey, you can have the other bed. You don't have to sleep with dad. Um, me and my friend, we're gonna get our, she's going to get our, her own room. And I'm like, all right, I get my own bed. I don't have to sleep with my dad. Great. She comes into the room about three times because they had issues with the room. And then also she lost her cell phone. So I didn't fall asleep until about 4 o'clock in the morning. So no sleep that night. Next day, go to the hospital, find out from my dad that he might be leaving Thursday instead of Saturday like he was supposed to leave with me. So, and it's not a, I'm leaving, it's a, I'm not sure if I'm leaving, I'm not sure if I'm not. So now I have to figure out uh, whether I'm going to leave myself, and I didn't put insurance on my flight, and or if I'm going to stay until Saturday and find a new hotel. So now money is coming into the picture, right? Then my stepmother messages Joanna and asks her, what are you going to do? Oh, is, is Eric going to be coming back early? Joanna texts me and asks me, what are you going to do? And I'm just like, you know what? I guess I'll come back. Because my, if my dad's coming back, I'll come back Thursday. Little did I know that Joanna had bought a ticket to come out and be with me. So what do you think is going through her mind now? Now, <laughs> she was stressed out, right? Because it was supposed to be a surprise. And anytime you have a surprise that you want to give to somebody, and that surprise gets unsurprised, <laughs> it's not the greatest feeling in the world, right? So she hits me with the, well, I was going to go there today. Now, maybe that wasn't the tone, it's through text, but you know, this is, this is how I read it. I'm good? Well, I was going to go there today and surprise you, and now I can't. And I was like, oh, whoa, 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 wait. If you're coming, that's fine. I'll stay, because that's fantastic. You know, I have a reason to stay now. The changing the flight was a lot more than I thought it would be. They're, you know, corporate America, they just want to rob you. Now, so... <laughs> I say I'm going to stay, but she's frustrated now. She finds out that the airplane messed up her return date and put her coming back for next Wednesday instead of for Saturday. So she's on the phone with them, trying to figure that out, trying to change the date. They're trying to charge her uh, upwards of $200 for changing the date on a mistake that they made. And for the phone call, on top of that, they want to charge her $25 just for calling. I tell you. So she figures it out. She gets there that night, Wednesday night. And her flight was delayed an hour. She flies over. I pick her up. And she's not able to get her equilibrium back. Anybody ever taken a flight before and you're just not able to get your equilibrium back and your, pain, your, your ears start experiencing pain? Well, that's what was happening with her. I've never seen this before. But by 10, 11 o'clock at night, she was in the bathroom crying from the pain. It was so bad. My sister comes and, and, and she says, we got to take her to the hospital. So we go to the hospital. I'm, I'm not from Atlanta, so what do you think I do? Anybody? What do you think I do? I, no, I went to the hospital where my grandma was in. I'm like, hey, I know a hospital. Let me just go to the hospital that my grandma's in, right? Makes sense. This is the only hospital I know. Now, 
Great, if you're ever in Atlanta, listen up. If you're ever in Atlanta, Grady Memorial Hospital is great for their stroke center, okay? If you have a stroke, you wanna go to Grady, okay? If you don't have a stroke, don't go to Grady. <laughs> don't go to Grady. They handle all the 911 calls for Atlanta. So we go into the emergency room. I lie to you, you guys will not believe us. I, I promise you, you're not gonna believe me. We walk into this emergency room. First of all, we walk through a metal detector to get into the emergency room. That already should have told me, Eric, you need to turn around and go somewhere else. But I'm like, okay, you know, security, you know, they care. You know, they care. You know, let's, you know, we're good, you know. We walk in, and it's, it, it looks like we're in the club, sort of. Because there's just people that are just hanging out. They're talking to each other. They're having full-blown conversation. There was this girl. She's on her laptop typing away. There's people, like, hanging out in the corner. And then sprinkled throughout the room, there are some people who actually look sick <laughs> in an emergency room. Everybody else looks like they're hanging out. So I sat down, we, 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 did the, we signed uh, Joanna's name onto the thing, they gave her the band, but as soon as we sat down, I started looking up other places on my phone. About 10, 15 minutes later after I've been doing that, Joanna asked me, can you go ask how long the wait is? I'm like, yes, I'll go ask. So I go up to the desk and I say, hey, um, could you tell me about how long the wait is? Uh, for, you know, about for, for, for Joanna to be seen. He looks up at me and he says, well, my patient who's been here the shortest or, or the longest, he said, as of right now is six hours. So at least a six hour wait. I said, what? No way. Immediately, we were out of there. We go outside, I lie to you not, there is some guy set up with his truck and a full-blown barbecue, barbecuing outside. I am not lying, church. They're barbecuing, and you got like five nurses waiting on line for their lunch, just chilling and dancing to the music. And I'm like, this is not real. This is, it's two o'clock in the morning. This is, this is not happening right now. So we wait for our Uber. We get a ride over to the new hospital. We walk in, they, we put her name down. Before she even fully sits down, they're taking her into triage. Boom, when she's done with triage, they take her into a room. Within an hour or two, they see her, they give her uh, medicine, different types of medicine. She's seen, she feels much better. Four o'clock in the morning, we're on our way to, back to the hotel. Now, remember, I told you my dad was leaving the next morning, so we had to be out of the room by 11, right? Four o'clock, we, we, we go to sleep. My father uh, wakes up like at six, so that wakes me up because I'm sort of a light sleeper. So I don't really sleep. At 11 o'clock, I walk downstairs to the hotel front desk and I say, hey, can we have a late checkout? She says, 12 o'clock is the latest or I have to charge you. So I'm like, okay, let me run upstairs and try to get this 30 minutes of sleep. We go to the hospital, we see my grandma. Again, I told you, in the hospital, things were going very well, right? So that day she had even more strength. She was able to lift up her arm. She's eating alone at this point. So things are going great. My aunt helps us finding a hotel room. We go to this hotel. We go to this hotel. And the air conditioner looks like it's from the 70s. It's broken. The floor is wet. We're so tired, though, that we just plop on the bed and we try to make it work. Now, I have, I have eczema, right? So my skin reacts for no apparent reason. But an hour and a half in, 
my skin starts itching. You think I'm gonna fall asleep when my whole body is itching? So I get up and I say, I can't do this. And Joanna looked like she was already ready to go. She's like, oh, I can't do this either. We need to go now. <laughs> so we get up, we walk downstairs, we tell the guy, hey, listen. I, well, I tell the guy, hey, listen, my skin started to react. I have eczema. We're not gonna be able to stay in this room. I don't, you know, I don't like the conditions in this hotel. And he's like, okay, but I'm not giving you a refund. Yeah, that's exactly how I felt, Danielle. We start, we, we're, we're like, all right, fine. Joanna calls, she starts to contest it on the phone with the company. We go uh, to the new hotel. While she's on the phone with them, I go and I take the key, we get the key, we go to the room, I'm trying to open the door, the door won't open. I go downstairs, hey, the key's not working. How did you do it? I did it the right way. It says this way up. He says, okay, boom, does it again. I go upstairs, trying to open the door, door won't open. Go downstairs, hey, the key's still not working. He's like, what? Okay, just wait over here. Let me take care of these 40 customers that are waiting. He takes care of all of them. He's like, okay, I'm just gonna give you a new room. Go upstairs, go to the new room. Finally, the door opens, go inside, at this point, do you think I'm still tired? Could have been either or, right? No, I'm not. I'm, a, I'm fully awake. You, you reach a point of exhaustion that you're not even tired anymore. And I wasn't even tired anymore. I go, I jump in the shower. It's one of those showers that you can change the thing to change how the water pressure goes. I cut my hand. Some of y'all breathing heavy. <laughs> and I'm just like, what else could happen? Next morning, I go, and, 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 and we're at the, when we're at the hospital, let me, let me go back for a second, because this reminds me. When we were at the hospital with Joanna, and I was sitting there, tired, hoping for her to get better, the Holy Spirit just spoke one word to me, attrition. And immediately, immediately, it was like I knew what he meant. Because attrition is a term that basically means slowly chipping away to make an army weak or to make a person weak. And I knew that the Holy Spirit, what he was telling me was, is that the enemy was trying to slowly chip away at me and just take little bits and pieces so that by the end I would just be done. And that led to me just being filled with, with new strength. So I'm like, okay, this is his tactic. All right, thank you, Holy Spirit, for, for informing me. Now I know what he's trying to do. I'm loved by you. Right? I'm a target, so that means that I'm a target. And if I'm a target, that means you have a plan and a purpose for me. So I'm good, God. I'm good. Now, my biggest objective that week was to preach Christ to my grandmother and to make sure that she was going to heaven. Now, she knows Jesus, but I wanted to be sure, sure that she heard the gospel. And I did it through various days, but on the last day we were there, I said, and through talking to Joanna, I said, you know what, I got to be sure about this. And I want to be sure that I did this the right way. So I go up to her and I share with her. And as I'm looking at her, I'm reminded of the condition she's in and the frustration that she's feeling. And I share with her my story of how I came to Jesus and how I knew that I needed God and that we are all as a creation, we're sinful and we need Jesus. We need Jesus to be saved. And I told her, hey, Grandma, this is not the last time we get to swap stories. This is not the last time we get to talk. In heaven, we'll get to do so again. We'll get to be with each other again. We'll get to talk to each other again. I just want to make sure that you 
have had the chance to accept Jesus into your heart. And I said, Grandma, do you want me to pray with you? Do you want to accept Jesus? And the way she would say yes or no, well, the way she would say yes was by squeezing your hand. And if she didn't squeeze, that meant no. So I held her hand and she squeezed it tightly. And I said, okay, Grandma, I want you to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray, I want you to repeat what I say, and then I'm just gonna pray for you. So right there, we pray, and as we're done praying, she just lets out a, 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 a deep breath. She just goes, We're sitting there, and Joanna turns to me and she says, I feel like God is, is saying to me that we should pray for her speech to return. And I believe in miracles. I've witnessed miracles, okay? I've seen God heal people. But every time, I don't know if you guys do this, but every time it's like, let's pray for a miracle, I'm always like, oh, I don't know. I'm a little scared. <laughs> Because I'm afraid that it might not happen. That means I'm putting the, 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 the ability of it happening or not on me, which is not on me. It's on God. So I say to her, I say, let's do it. Turn to grandma. I say, grandma, do you believe that Jesus can heal? She squeezes my hand. I say, grandma, I know you're really frustrated because you want to speak. Do you want us to pray for him to heal you and, and give you your speech back? She squeezes my hand. So we pray. And we pray for God to heal her. Unfortunately, it didn't happen this time or right now. But at the end, Joanna said to me, do you think maybe she's afraid? So I turned to Grandma and I said, Grandma, are you afraid right now? She was holding my hand, and immediately, the only way I can explain this is it felt like her hand became completely still. And she looked me in my eyes with this rock hard gaze. And it was as if she did not want me to move her hand so that I would possibly misunderstand any movement as if it meant that she was afraid. She looked at me, did not move her hand, and it was as if she was screaming to me, no, I'm not afraid. And I kept holding her hand and I said, Grandma, are you tired? And she squeezed my hand lightly and put it down. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 says, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. My grandma, this week, because of the stroke, her mind was divided in two. Half of her body was no longer under her control. She was not all together in one place. And because of that, she was not able to move half of her body, nor was she able to speak. And many times, the church, we are unable to move and to speak because we are not all together in one place. We are of divided mind as, as opposed to being in one mind. And when I asked her, are you afraid? She did not move. But when I said, are you tired? She squeezed. Many of you are not afraid of God moving in your life. You are simply tired. The enemy may have been chipping away at you slowly, trying to take away what God has purposed in your life. But I'm here to tell you today that God still has a plan and a purpose for you. That God still has his eyes set on you. That God still loves you.
<clears throat> so after she said, she said she was tired, I tried to comfort her. I told her, I know you're frustrated, Grandma. You don't, you don't have to tell me right now. I know. And, and I know that in some ways that comforted her, but that was not her speaking, which would have given her instant relief. Yeah, I could have said the most beautiful words in the world, but I knew that what would have instantly given her relief would have been her being able to speak again. Because it was something she was created to do, that she had done all her life was speak. And boy, was she an opinionated woman. And yet at this moment, she could not do what she was created to do. And that led to frustration. And many of you today may be living a life where you are not living what God created you for. To move in his spirit. To walk in step with him. To be an ambassador here on earth for Christ. Just like the disciples were after they were of one accord. And that has led to frustration. That has led to tiredness. That has led to fear. Well, it no longer has to be that way. The biggest thing that would have given her comfort would have been for that speech to come back. The biggest thing that will give you the most comfort in your life is for you to live out the purpose of God in your life. How do you do that? By the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit alone. Amen, church? The stroke that my grandmother had this week damaged a portion of her brain that she may never get back unless God wills it. There may be portions of our body that may be damaged, but God can heal that. My prayer is that we will all be of one accord, one body, engaging the Holy Spirit in such a way that he moves amongst us. So church, I invite you to that today. Amen.